I'm very excited, if you can't tell, about this panel because we have done, for those who followed us, everything from esports to gaming to production, all the things, but we've never done a PA panel. And I wanted to do this panel because I think a lot of times in this industry, we see a lot of panels with EVPs and executives and managers and supervisors, and that's great, right? That's great. That's super educational. But we wanted to do... Um, you know, just a panel about PA, like PAs and why is it so important to take advantage of this opportunity if you're looking to break into the industry and everything that comes with it. So I want you to hear from the people who are doing the work across many different verticals. So as you start to think about your career, whether you want to direct, produce, or do other things to entertain, because there's so many careers in this industry, um, just to know that PA could be a great start, okay? So let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to have the panelists introduce themselves, um, just your name, um, what kind of production assistant you've done. If you're affiliated with the company, you can throw that in there too, just a little bit about yourself. So Nayeli, why don't you kick it off? Hi guys, my name is Nayeli Quiroz. Um, I am currently uh, the operations coordinator over at Pretty Bird Ventureland. Uh, we are in Culver City, California. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I work with I was a PA and then I moved up and now I have a lead, uh, a group of PAs that I lead. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hania Mendoza. I'm a production assistant, I mainly freelance. I mainly work in commercials. Hey everyone, I'm David. You can call me DJ. Uh, I actually used to work as a PA with Nayeli uh, and then she was my boss for a little while, which was awesome. Uh, now I do freelance PA work and I'm enrolled in college again. Hi everyone, my name is Mari. I use she, they pronouns and I'm a freelance PA. Um, I usually work with Contrast Films who tends to produce Vivo live performances and Amazon music stuff. Hi, I'm Jakima Kimbrough. Um, I've been a PA for over like five years. Um, I've recently been working on Selling Sunset and Selling Orange County for Netflix. Um, and yeah. Amazing. I love this group already. <laughs> so I'll kick it off with a very important question. Your journey. Because I think a lot of times when we are listening to panelists or listening to panel, our first question is like, how did you get here? Like, what was your path to here? So we don't need your entire biography, but if you could briefly walk us through, um, you know, your like, how did you come into being a PA? Like, where did you get your start? When were you first exposed to this industry? Because I want to show everyone in attendance that everyone's journey is very different and unique and personal to them. It's not X plus Y equals Z, right? So a few people can chime in. Just tell us, like, what was your journey to here? Well, first, I just want to say I didn't attend college um, after high school. Um, I just decided to get an internship with the production house um, and it was only for juniors and seniors in college, but I just stayed persistent and I kept emailing them and they eventually just let me uh, intern straight out of high school. I didn't even graduate yet. I was still just 18 and that's just kind of how I got my start. I just threw myself out there. I knew I wasn't a school person, but I was really passionate about film. So I was just like dedicated to just find another way and I made it work. I can hop in. Uh, my start was through LinkedIn. I just emailed my previous boss. And two days later, I got a response. And I realized the thing is, you can't apply through in apply. You have to message them directly so that you get a response. And that kind of snowballed me into my first PA role. And then when I loved it, I got to work with really cool people. Uh, I got to see a lot of cool projects and that sort of opened the door for me to start seeing how I could use that PA role to start aiming for different roles in production in order to move up. And so that's uh, kind of how I entered the industry. Sure. Well, I can, I can chime in too. Um, I, I did go to college for film school, kind of. It was, was it my major because I knew that. I was, I was a little too nervous to, to major in it, but it was my minor and I was very active in it. And it got me to meet uh, the person who actually put my foot in the door to get into Pretty Bird, which is Arda over at Pipelines. Um, so it, I, I, I got my in through, through my network and it, it, was, it led me to here, which is, I'm very grateful for. So I went to college for something completely different that was in film but I always knew that I've always wanted to work in the industry. So at my last job, a friend of a friend um, pretty much introduced me to her friend and yeah, 
that's why I kind of started in this. So I went to Cal State Long Beach for film. And during my sophomore year, I interned for a producer at his like personal production company. Um, two months in, um, he offered me a PA opportunity since he was also doing freelance production coordinating for Contrast Films, which works with Vivo and Amazon Music. Um, he did say I needed a driver's license, which at the time I did not have. I was taking the metro from Cal State Long Beach. I lived at the dorms all the way to Hollywood. Um, it was kind of hectic, but as soon as he offered that, I immediately started learning how to drive. And then I eventually got my first PA job with Vivo and it's, I've just been working with them since. Yeah. Would you say a driver's license is required, like a standard for being a PA? Okay. Yeah. So if you don't have your license, you need to note that, okay? Yes. <laughs> I want to back off a couple of things that were said. Um, the, the, first of all, the school piece, because obviously in today's day, like I, I, I graduated college. It was a great experience, but it's just not the only way to be successful in entertainment. There's so many people who have graduated from college, have gone to community college, have not gone to college, have jumped right into internships. So it can look so many different ways. So I don't want anyone to be discouraged if they didn't graduate um, the, can't make it in this industry because there's so many opportunities um, available to you. And I'm, I think it's very important to note that. Secondly, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not for old people. I'm still hearing that in 2024. If you don't have a LinkedIn, note it. This is your homework. Shari said, create a LinkedIn. Or if you haven't you know, touched your LinkedIn in, in a few months, blow it off and spend some time because everyone's on LinkedIn. That's You're missing out on collaborative opportunities, networking opportunities, articles, news, jobs, Everything's on LinkedIn. So I love the fact that Dee mentioned that because I think a lot of people are afraid um, to create their LinkedIn or think it's for a certain age group and it's not because that's a tool for networking. And the fact that he just reached out, I mean, you can reach out to people. I mean, the worst they can do is not respond. The worst they can do is go ghost you, right? And that's not the end of the world, but at least you shot your shot. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And then the networking piece we'll get to a little later. So if, if you notice between the five different journeys and stories, I just want to, um, to kind of talk about the difference between being like an office PA and like a freelance PA, because those are two different situations. It's not just this is a PA, this is how it looks. It looks very different depending on what work environment you're in. So if you could just chime in, if you worked in an office, what does a typical day look like for a PA that may work in an office for a company versus um, on set or as a freelancer? I just want to talk about the differences there. Uh, I work currently in an office, so I'm, I'm, uh, I kind of have to move around and be be helpful to many departments in the in the in the office, um, which is really cool because I I get to see various aspects of it. But days days very much vary. Um, I like the start of the day, you know, get in, make sure that things are looking right, uh, set up things for the executives so that when they get in, they're ready to go, um, and then just be of assistance and of service to all the varying departments in the company and. Yeah, days very much vary. Like yesterday, we got like a task to do something for like research. And then today it's like we need crew holes for the the commercial that's going to shoot in a few weeks, you know. So it, it, we, we just get a lot of projects and it's just a matter of taking them on and just, you know, waiting for the next one and going from there. Building off of what Nayali just said, I've just entered the freelance PA world, so I'm still learning about that but I'm kind of familiar now with the office PA world. Uh, and like Nayali said, you don't know what each day is going to bring. And honestly, depending on which department you have, you know, friends with or connections with, they might ask you for help, which you, which was never there in your job description. You're going to go there and you're going to learn. Uh, the first time, I was offered to make crew holes, no idea what it was, but immediately I was just like, yes, uh, I got it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and so you don't know what you're going to get, but I can say a lot of office PA stuff revolves around pre-production work. So, you know, research, crew holes, all of that would fall under pre-production. Um, as an office PA, the only role I guess I've done directly related to production is pretty much 
housing and taking care of like wardrobes and props and stuff like that. Uh, but outside of that, it's a lot of pre-production stuff. And as someone who is more interested on the pre-production side of things, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed being a, being an office PA. Yeah. Um, I want to chime in there a little bit. Um, so I worked for Amazon Music Live, which was a concert series that would um, throw a concert after Thursday Night Football on Twitch, I believe, and Amazon Prime. Um, and I was like the key PA slash office PA. I had kind of office PA duties. Um, it was for around three months. So we had to get all the start work paperwork done. Um, and then as well, make sure people were getting paid on a weekly basis. So some office PA duties that I had there was just getting the paperwork done for around like 450 individuals, as well as laminating um, signage for um, on set and stuff. So all the audience members knew where to go and more like random paperwork, stuff like that. Yeah. And um, being a set PA, it's more like labor work where you have to pick up really heavy stuff, um, support the AD team. Um, doing lockups, pick up trash. So I didn't really uh, have much experience doing office PA, but when I did, it was when I was in an internship and basically how that kind of went. Um, it was just as soon as I come in, having to make coffee, that's like the first thing that everybody wanted. So making sure the coffee was made, um, taking out the trash, just little things. Um, yeah, just little small things around the office that, you know, uh, we needed to take care of. Um, and also just like shredding papers. I don't know if any of you guys had to do that, but like the first few months of being like a, a office PA, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this because it's just like we were shredding documents from like the 1900s. Like it was a super <laughs> mundane task that really made me question if this was for me. But um, my dad always told me, you know, this is just a start. You have to pay your dues and um, eventually to pay off. So um, don't ever get discouraged if it's not seeming like you're getting anywhere because um, it, it definitely takes time. You got to pay your dues for sure. Yeah. And so, I'm just going to ask you just because I know we we heard a lot about office PA. Could you speak to your experience being on set? Because um, I do want to make sure that, that we have a kind of view of, of both. If you have worked on set, could you speak to that experience, what it entails, how it differs from being in an office? Uh, someone mentioned, like, it's really labor work. Um, I'm sorry, excuse my dog in the back. Um, it's just a lot of being on your feet uh, and a lot of just, just being aware um, of what's going on on set. And honestly, since I didn't go to college, I kind of use being on set as, like, learning each department and seeing what... I kind of liked about this department what I didn't. Um, and honestly, I got to get my hands in on a little bit of everything. So it's definitely important to establish relationships when you're on set. Um, that's kind of what I did just uh, when I first started was asking a lot of questions. Sometimes being a PA, just like on set too, can be boring. There's days where you just be standing around. Um, there's sometimes there may not be a lot to do, but that's yeah. the point of being a PA. You kind of have to make work for yourself, like go pick up some be seen, moving around, never just standing still and always, always pay attention to the walkie. Um, Cause if you don't know how to, you know, respond to that walkie, that'll get you in a little mess. <laughs> the walkie. Um, the walkie is very important. Yeah. So, and, and I asked that question because I think a, a common misconception is, PA looks a certain way and it, it, like, it looks a certain way and it just does not. So if you are looking to break into the industry, like really start to think, or any industry for that matter, start to think about what type of environment you'll thrive best in. Like, would you prefer to be in an office versus set? That's its pros and cons, right? So my next question, usually, not always the case, but usually when people are pursuing PA opportunities, they are, they are looking to be to direct or produce or other things, right? Because there's so many different paths. So if you could just um, talk about what your ultimate aspiration is, if you, if you are a director or producer and how being a PA has helped you get closer to that goal, um, I do think that's important to understand as well. In what way specifically has being a PA helped you get closer to your goal if you're looking to be a producer or director or whatever else? 
I think the most important thing is that through being a PA, I've been able to make connections with people who are in roles that I'd want to be. Back in the day, during my first interviews, if I was asked, what did I want to be? It was kind of something in the highest level. So I would normally go with showrunner, you know, something where I'm at the top. But after having actually worked, I've realized there's quite a few roles in production that I'd be in interested in before I can ever get to being a showrunner. And so working in production showed me that there is a ladder that you can climb. Like there's a way to get to being that showrunner. And so for me, the immediate goal is to try and find something like a production coordinator role because it's important to use your PA role as a stepping stone into something bigger. Because being a PA isn't the end of all of it, but it is the start. And you have to know that eventually you're going to move out of being a PA. And when that happens, you kind of want to know where you want to go. And so after, in my undergrad, I was in screenwriting. And so right up until the end of undergrad, I was like, okay, screenwriting is the only thing that I know how to do in this industry. So I got to stick with it. But after being a PA, now I'm like, okay, I actually do enjoy a lot of production stuff that goes on. And so that's now given me a much clearer track on how moving up in production can actually help me move my screenwriting dreams forward as well. Because it was through those connections that I made with uh, like EPs at Pretty Bird and stuff where I learned about optioning scripts and stuff like that. And so now... I have a much clearer track on how to chase that dream of being uh, a showrunner. Anyone else want to add? I can I can go ahead and go. Um, I think for me the 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 goal as as I graduated from college was to be become a producer. Um, but little did I know that there's so many like various tracks that you can take. And I think the beauty of being in an office setting is that I get to see like oh, she's a production coordinator and this is what she does. This is, you know, uh, our CEO, she's an executive producer as well. This is what she does. She's running the business and also doing side stuff. So it's, it, it's for me, it's it's helped me see other avenues that I can take. And it's, it's gotten like more now more so I'm like, I want to learn more about the business and really understand that side and um, and how I can, how I can move up and, and, and it's really cool in this specific job because I get to see all these different productions come into the into the office and I get to see like PMs and co coordinators and like office PAs like Tanya, like I get to see what they do and learn from them. And then hopefully eventually, you know, step into that role and, you know, work my way up to a coordinator role, supervisor role. And then hopefully maybe in the end, stick to the producer, uh, the, the goal at the end. So how I use PA to uh, get to where I'm at now, like I said, when you're on set, you're going to get to kind of play the observer um, to a lot of these different departments. And um, at first, I thought I just wanted to be like a producer or just a writer, just one thing. And then I kind of realized, like, I kind of want to dabble in everything. Everything was kind of intriguing me, honestly. Yeah, I just decided like I wanted to be um, I have my own production company and um, just be like a content creator to where I can have my own creative um, inputs on thing on things like that. So I kind of just observed everything that I've all the different departments on set and I've kind of applied that into my own work because I am also trying to be a filmmaker in my own way. Um, so yeah, I've just been using what I've learned to apply it to my own uh, creative art. And when you're on set as a PA, there is sometimes, most likely there'll be some downtime. Um, and at this point is usually when you can ask your questions, as long as whoever you're asking that question is not busy. Um, and a good person to speak to, um, if you do want to become a producer, is a production coordinator, since oftentimes after being a key PA, that's like the next step. Just ask like what their day-to-day -day is like and how they're PAing, like ask about their journey, I guess, and how they got there and use their notes and their feedback as like an input for your like career choices. Um, but 
I feel like a lot of people on set do want to help out PAs. Um, you just got to ask. And I feel like a lot of the times, like they'll, if you're like putting in like your work and stuff, a lot of the times they'll be more than happy then to give you feedback or like even help you out. And I think the central thing in all of this, I always call like being a PA, it's like a, a Play-Doh opportunity. It's really what you make it. You can mold it into whatever you want mm-hmm. to be. If you see PAs come in and have crappy attitudes because they think the work is beneath them and they don't, and it's noticed by the people in the office and they don't have the most pleasant experience because mm-hmm. they don't want to do the sweeps and they don't want to get coffee and they don't want to do the, 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 the things that they, the PA entails, right? And so they don't have the best experience as opposed to someone who comes in and they're really, like a lot of them have said, are looking to learn. They're looking to network and ask questions and, and move up and get opportunities outside of the office and et cetera. So it really is truly what you make it. If you come in with a crappy attitude and you think this job is beneath you, then you're not going to get a, a great return. But if you come in and you're open-minded and you ask mm-hmm. questions and network, you could have a great experience, a, a very good learning experience to take you to the next step. I know there's, like with Pretty Bird, I can only sp- speak for Pretty Bird, but there's been PAs who are now directors on the roster, you know, and, and that didn't come from them coming in and having a crappy attitude. <laughs> so, you know, you just have to think of the long term, like what you want out of your career, like what you want that to look like. And that's the whole reason we're having this conversation, right? And so um, I always say, and I'll say it 85 million times on, on every panel that I do, but this is a proactive industry, not a mm-hmm. reactive one. So if you come in things to come to you, it's not going to happen. Like you really have to come in and make it your own and be proactive, not reactive. But you'll be surprised how many people are just waiting. They're just waiting around, just waiting, coasting. Like this is not a coast gig, right? Like you have to go out there and, and, and get it. So that leads me to my next question because we're going to keep it real because I want you to leave knowing the full, well-rounded view on what it means to be a PA. For each of you, I want to know very briefly, what's your favorite part about being a PA? And what is the part that just like, ugh, I do not. This is the less glamorous, most challenging part about being a PA. Because I think it's important to understand the good and good and the not so good, right? So what's your favorite part of being a PA, like most rewarding? And then what's the most challenging or less than ideal piece of being a PA? I would say that the most, like, I'll start with the most challenging um, for me, since I do sometimes work with a live audience and usually there's alcohol involved. Sometimes we have to go around and clean up people's vomit. Um, and that's just not really, really fun. And you, there's confetti involved at the end of like the performance. So that gets gooey mixed with like all the alcohol on the ground. It, it's just not the best experience, but usually other PAs are doing that with you. So it just builds like a sense of like friendship or like camaraderie. Um, like you're both pushing through it, sticking it out. Like, you know, like this is not going to be like the end all be all eventually, like you'll move up. Um, but I would say like, that's the worst part. Usually dealing with like with trash, um, vomit, stuff like that. Um, and for me, I guess the most best part has been, um, I guess, getting to see all these like live performances for free and getting paid for it. Um, that's been really, really awesome. And just being able to be in a, like a, in a space that allows me to grow and learn more. Um, I feel like I've learned so much more on the job as a PA than I ever did in school. Um, not that school is bad at all, because I feel like I learned a lot there too, but being on set and getting all this experience, like I actually doing it, I feel like it's just invaluable compared to like just sitting in the classroom sometimes, even though well, that that's still helpful in other ways. Yeah. For me as a freelance in commercials, um, I what I like about it is I get to work on different projects almost every month. Uh, some of them might have some celebrities that I like, so it's pretty cool seeing them on set working. Um, but some of the stuff that I don't like would be, um, I say, like the 3 a.m. call times. There will be times where you get 3 a.m. call times. You have to be on set for more than 15 hours. Um, another downside, I would say, would be sometimes you work with teams that aren't so great at what they're doing, mm-hmm. and you kind of have to either take over from um that person or um you get to learn from their mistakes which is a, a good thing i think so i'll start off with uh, my least favorite part about being a, a pa is 
I'm not gonna lie, uh, at least for me, a few of the sets I've been on, uh, other people in different positions, which are usually higher because PA is kind of like you, the bottom or whatever, or at least that's how some people will end up treating you. Um, so I would say definitely, if you want to be on set, have thick skin because there will be like directors, producers, whoever that'll treat you like you're just like literally just a PA. Um, and it's it's hard being someone who knows their worth and knowing how creative they are. And then, you know, somebody kind of shuts that shuts that down and just like, oh, can you just go sweep like. I don't know. It's just like kind of the way people will treat you sometimes uh, being a PA, um, kind of just not showing that respect in some. But that's not every set. But um, just keep that in mind. Just definitely have to have tough skin working in this industry. But I will say um, one of the better parts is just the experience, um, um, getting to meet different talent, um, especially when you're working with people that you've looked up to when you were younger. So it's definitely full circle. Um, I just say take advantage of every opportunity you have. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with with what you just said about you know sometimes we get treated as just PAs, which is, mm -hmm. you know it's it's not the best feeling. But yeah, like Alma said in the chat, is don't take things personally. And I think that's something. I think I didn't have as thick of skin as I did like a year ago, like when I got this job. So I think it's definitely like pushing me to you know, not take things personally. It's a job. I'm doing my best. I'm going to keep giving it my best. And we're just, we're going to keep moving forward and keep working. Um, and I think one of the, the best things about being okay, though, is making those connections. Like I, mm -hmm. went, I was on a set recently and uh, the second AD, I think he was really looking out for me and like, you know, definitely, you know, I got his Instagram and it was like, this is what you should do. And um, so I think those connections are also very, very, they're just, they're solid, golden. It's interesting because everyone on set knows what a PA is. It's usually the PAs that are coming in fresh, learning what it is to be a PA. So you have both extremes where there's some people who know what a PA is and they know they can work you to the bone, so they're going to. And on the flip side, there's people who know exactly how tough mm -hmm. it is to be a PA. So they're going to, kind of take you under their wing and try and help you as much as they can. Um, the first PA set that I was on, I got pretty lucky because our key, it was three of us, one key PA and two new PAs, me and uh, an old buddy of mine. Me and my buddy didn't know anything about sets. So when they handed us walkie talkies, we were like, dude, what is this? Where are we going? <laughs> and so we got really lucky that she took us under her wing and taught us everything really quickly. And that's where you also have to know, especially if you have no PA experience, that you should be willing to listen to everybody because you're going to keep that very first day on set. You're going to get such a information overload, but you're going to have to try your best and memorize all of that because any anytime you go to set, all of that stuff still applies. Um, and that being said, I think on in line with what Nayeli said, I think the connections you make are very rewarding. Uh, I love that moment at the end of a shoot day where the PAs are just walking around cleaning up and we're doing like a little debrief of the day and how we all feel. Uh, those moments give me a lot of comfort. And the other more rewarding thing is when uh, people who are like higher roles on set, even if you're not doing anything directly related to what's happening in front of the camera when they still notice that you're putting in that work it feels amazing i think there was one day on set where the whole day all i had to do was just go around get coffee from different shops but the production coordinator was like dude you haven't stopped running all day thank you and that was like oh you noticed uh so those moments feel amazing. Uh, the tougher moments are obviously when you slowly come to realize that part of being a PA is like, like being in the service industry because you're basically catering to a lot of people and you're cleaning up after a lot of people. And so that, you you can't avoid it. It's going to happen, uh, but you just kind of got to roll with those punches. And, and I think that's 
That's a perfect segue to, I mean, I'm going to kick it back to the old school cliche that we've all heard in preschool. Attitude is everything. How many times have we heard that, right? But it's crazy how the cliches from elementary school are so applicable as adults. But attitude really is everything. Like you can go into it, like Dee said, like Jema, everybody say you can go into it and say, ugh, I don't want to do this, 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 and this. And you approach it with that attitude, it's not, not going to get you far. That is not the industry for that. But we all have to start somewhere, right? So I guess ask yourself after this or, or right now, ask yourself how important your craft is to you. Like, what are you willing to do to get to where you need to be, right? Because very rarely, I mean, it happens, but very rarely do we just get the job that we want and then just take off from there, right? We, I, like I had to put in the work. And I think another thing that's so important that you've heard probably 85 times is the networking, like the making connections. This is a relationship-based industry, okay? Remember that. This is a relationship based industry okay and people want to work with people they like yes your experience is important yes they, they want you to have a good attitude but at the end of the day like this is not just pa but for whatever job what i'm learning about entertainment i've been in entertainment for 15 years and they want to work with people that they like that they want to look at every day that has a good attitude like that is very important and that doesn't mean being extroverted you can be an introvert and still be successful and people still like you want to work with you that is i'm busting that myth okay you don't have to be like me spirit hands, being a theater kid and being all up in people's faces and talking loud. But you can be an introvert or an extrovert. You just have to be likable with a great attitude. And I, I say that it seems so simple, but please remember that your attitude can get you very, 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 very far. OK, so thank you for that. Um, we have a couple more questions before we open it up for uh, questions. So I do want you to start thinking about questions that you want to ask and you can start private messaging me directly. So if you don't private message me your question, it will not get asked. OK. Um, so lastly, I want to say, like, how did you, I know we talked about our journey, but if someone's looking to become a PA or break into um, this industry, how do they do that? Do you, are we still doing resumes? Are we submitting reels? Are we, like, what are we doing? Like, how do you, what's the next step to getting there? Or we can share your, how you got there. Like, did you know somebody? Did you show up with a reel? It was kind of interesting. I definitely agree that this whole industry is built on relationships. And I kind of got to see that indirectly when I got hired with Pretty Bird because I had worked with another company called Escape Artists and I was lucky enough that they liked me to give me a letter of recommendation. And my old boss at Pretty Bird saw that letter of recommendation and recognized who it was from. And it was that letter of recommendation that I'm assuming prompted him to reach back out to me after I messaged him on LinkedIn because the first message I got from him was, oh, you've worked here with these people? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. Then I got hired at Pretty Bird. I was lucky enough that during my undergrad, my professors kind of gave us a little inkling of what to expect with the PA life. So as soon as I got hired, I reached out to my professors and I was like, I did it. Your boy's been hired. Uh, and weirdly, my professors knew the people at Pretty Bird because turns out that one of the directors from Pretty Bird had once studied uh, at Cal State Northridge. And so I was like, dude, this is so weird because from getting hired in one place, I've realized three other connections that I've had previously that all know each other one way or another. And so that's what gave me my first push into being a PA. Yeah. I am going to go back to the relationships. And I think what Shari was saying about attitude, well, again, out, I was the one who really pushed my resume for me to replace her because she was getting promoted. Um, you know, if she didn't like my attitude or if I, you know, I didn't work well on whatever projects that we worked on prior in college, like, you know, it, those things get noticed. And luckily I, I think I did a good job and, you know, and I, I got to the position that I, I, I am now. So, you know, it's all about networking and the attitude is attitude and your spirit and your tenacity and like all of those things get noticed by people, even if you don't think they do. Um, so networking and being a good person overall. Go ahead, Mari. Um, thank you. Um, so for me, the way I got like my first paid PA job since I was interning for like a producer for his like production company that was all unpaid we i had my first unpaid pa gig with him um he was executive producing this like music video 
And that was my first time ever on a set. And I remember the night before I was like Googling like, okay, like what to do on set. Um, and questions like regarding just PAing stuff. And I was the only PA on there, so I couldn't really ask anyone else any questions. So I would just say, have initiative, like research, like ask people questions, like Reddit, go on Reddit, ask questions there, like in general, specifically for like that first unpaid job. I, for some reason I got waters and I just went around to people like, Hey, do you want water? Do you want water? Do you need this? Do you need, need that? And we didn't have AC at the studio and it was summer. It was very hot in the warehouse. So I went around with like a little board, like, fanning people down that were like sweating, like the director and um, the AC and just having initiative and not waiting for um, the producer who I interned for to tell me what to do. I feel like that opened the door for him to invite me to um, be a paid PA for like Vivo and Amazon. And I never knew he was working there before that. So you never know really like what the people you're working with now. Um, who they know and who they can get you in contact with. And I would just say, yeah, like initiative is a huge thing. Another example is I, to be transparent, my PA gigs are not enough money to keep me um, afloat. I just graduated in May, so I'm still working on building my network. So three weeks ago, um, I was driving around Manhattan Beach since I live 20, 15 minutes from it. And I saw that there was a studio in Manhattan Beach and I was like, all right, I'm gonna call the production company that's there. And I literally just called them, the executive producer picked up for some reason. And I was like, hey, do you need an assistant? And two days later, like, well, he was in a meeting. So he was like, I'll call you back. And then like two days later, he called me back saying, yeah, I actually do need an assistant. And I started that like three weeks ago. So hopefully that keeps me afloat in between PA gigs. but. Yeah, initiative, like no one's going to go out like giving you a job. Like you guys have to go find that out yourself. And how like DJ said that um, LinkedIn, use LinkedIn. That's very, very beneficial. And reach out to your connections and people who you went to school with, your professors. Yeah. Um, I We have quite a few questions coming in. So I do want to uh, get to the questions. And this is piggybacking off of Marty's um response and we have a couple of questions. So I'm just going to answer it all, but also too, um, just a, a tip, but we have, so if you are in LA or I know some people from uh, Georgia too, and I know they have not as big as LA obviously, but they do have a, a entertainment has a presence there too, or wherever you are, like Google the production companies in your city. So, you know, pro video production companies and production companies or agencies or whatever. And then honestly, maybe just eat, I would just reach out to them. Like everybody has a general email. Like we have a reel, shoot that reel out. Like Pretty Bird gets hundreds of reels, <laughs> hundreds of reels. Um, okay. So everyone, everyone's just shooting their shot. So you just don't know when that yes can come. So if you are looking to work more in an office environment, or even on set, because it can turn into that, I would literally put like Google production companies, creative agencies, whatever in my area or in my city. And then I would just start reaching out to them. Cause again, the worst that can do is not respond and did it kill you no okay it's the worst thing in the world is you don't hear back okay but at least you shot your shot so i just want to throw that in there so i want to get to these questions because these questions are great okay what's the best way to meet more pas and coordinators in the la area should you go through linkedin imdb or is there another great way um i would say linkedin like linkedin is a really really amazing platform just start posting regularly on there like if you're in school like post all the films you've been working on at school um and just reach out to people like more than likely those people are more than happy to have join like a zoom a quick zoom call for like five minutes even if it's that and just be nice and appreciative towards anyone you also meet and i feel like if you have a positive attitude like those doors will open for you and just keep being persistent like um if you keep going towards your dreams i feel like eventually like someone's going to want to help you out yeah and uh, there's another good resource is um, a friend of mine she got her job through uh facebook, facebook groups um mm -hmm. a lot of uh, there's a lot of out there that are looking for set pas or office pas um i know that there's also some programs that help you out i think mm -hmm. um like street lights manifest works 
are a couple. That's so good, Tanya. I was going to say that. And specifically, I just dropped it in the chat. It's a group called Who You Know, um, BIPOC and Media Entertainment. There's like 20,000 people in that group all over the world. And they post PA gigs, opportunities nationwide. So New York, Atlanta, across overseas, the South. So that's a great resource to join too. I dropped it in the chat. And then while you're on Facebook, just again, like search production PAs. I don't know, get creative PA jobs in this city or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. part of the, the work where right? I'm being proactive. So that was great, Tanya. And some of the programs, um, I'm putting out on the spot, but we work with a lot of like those training programs like Ghetto Film School, Street Lights, Brick Foundation. Um, out of you could just drop some of them in the chat because um, there's so many great training programs for recent grads or if you're still in school um, or not. Um, that will teach you everything you need to know about a specific uh, niche, like production or post or whatever. So there, there's just a lot of information out there. Um, so we'll try and drop as many um, of those training programs and nonprofits in the chat as we can in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so next question is, um, can I ask if you think it's plausible to do PA work in college? What is that like? And I have a driver's license, but would you say for New York, it's as important to have a car as it is in California or Atlanta? I think having a car is still definitely needed regardless of where you are, just because a lot of being a PA is moving stuff around. So if you don't have a vehicle to move stuff, they're going to find someone who does. Uh, and so definitely, definitely have a, a car. I had a similar experience where just before I got hired, one of the questions I got was, do you have a car? Mm -hmm. And I made a promise that I would get one eventually. And I think a month in, I was finally able to get my license and a car. So yeah. definitely, definitely have a car. Uh, was there a second part to that question that I missed? I think they were asking about other cities. I think we're all in LA though, right? I don't know much about New York or Atlanta, I'm gonna be honest. But I think it's a case by case basis. So like I would just recommend, like I said earlier, like just reaching out to production companies themselves and asking them. I'm, I, I ask questions to what I want to know the answer to. So it's just being I know it's scary, but just being courageous to ask the right questions to get the information you need. So if you are in another state outside of California, I think it's just a matter of reaching out to the companies that you find online. And then just asking them what the requirements are. What are some tips for creating reels if you haven't really had as much experience as a PA? I, I don't know. Uh, is anyone, does any of you have reels that you've created? No. Um, just from previous panels we've done and just talking to people, if you are an aspiring director, um, you you need to have a reel. That's number one. I say that because you'd be just surprised how many aspiring directors don't have reels. <laughs> you need a reel. Um, that's like your visual resume. Okay. So um, like I said, pre-bird, because we work here, we get tons of reels on a daily basis. Um, and that's literally their way of seeing your vision and your work. So if you don't have a reel and you and you have a say work for like a big brand or company, shoot things with your friends. Um, this is a collaborative industry as well. So if you have friends who are editors or have friends who do, you know, sound mixing or lane tracks or who are also producers themselves or directors, like collaborate with them and help each other. Um, that's what a lot of people do and just create your own original content to start until you get that big break. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, is there anything that we should bring with us on the first day as a PA on set? I'm an office PA, but I've had some set experience. I always like to bring like a belt and have like pencils, Sharpies, uh, gaff tape, paper tape, any like little random office things that you could need or any like on the fly, like, oh, I, um, there was one time on a set where they were like, I need, I need a red Sharpie. I was like, oh, I actually have them right here. And then the, the PM was like, oh, solid. Like, perfect. I didn't have to go like scour the set for it. You know, like just bring all little things that could be needed. Uh, yeah. I would like to add to that. I think that's a great point, Nahili. Um, I also bring my computer because sometimes I have, I'm in charge of like, checking out walkies and I prefer personally to create a spreadsheet instead of like a paper with everyone's name next to like the walkie number. Um, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> also a book sometimes, but not really, there's not really time for a book, but sometimes I bring it. Maybe I want to read it on lunch. <laughs> this question is for everyone. I'm about to graduate from undergrad, but my only work experience is food service and hotel and hospitality. Do you have any tips for reaching out to people on LinkedIn or structuring my profile 
file a resume to get those first few gigs. So basically, if you haven't worked in entertainment before, how can you still pitch yourself? Would, would they still consider someone outside of entertainment as a 4PA? Um, I would say, yeah, I, I don't I don't think it really matters. Like if you're just starting off, I don't really think it matters your first experience. Um, just as long as you are hardworking and um, mm -hmm. you can just get the job done, basically. Some jobs you go on, it's not really like that big of a deal if you have experience. They just want to know that you are going to follow directions and um, that's pretty much it. So yeah, don't let that discourage you. Um, we all got to start somewhere. At one point in time, we all had like one job on our resume until we still made it until we had a list, a whole, you know, six page list of, of our resume. So, uh, yeah, don't let it discourage you. Just shoot your shot. And, you know, the worst thing somebody can say is, you know, we're, we're good, but keep going. Yeah, most again, most people know PA roles are entry level roles so that mm -hmm. they're not expecting you to have a ton of paing experience uh so i'd say the most important thing if you could convey in either your query letter or i'd say for your for your resume internships help a lot because then they at mm -hmm. least know that you have that inclination to be in the industry even if you don't have any industry work experience uh, but i'd say the big thing is they're looking for people who are willing to just put in the manual work. So if you can communicate that aspect of who you are to them clearly, I think you should be fine. And I'll just say too, um, cause I'm a transferable skills ambassador. Again, they're not expecting you to have 25 years of experience in entertainment work for some of the biggest networks and studios applying for a PA. So even if you are, have been like a barista or you bag groceries, those are useful skills. OK, yeah. so don't discredit um, your work experience. So highlight, you know, if you work for like at Ralph's, for example, like bagging groceries, you still have to have a certain level of professionalism, team working, stocking inventory, like whatever you've done. Like, don't discredit that just because it's not in the industry, like working if you work at Starbucks or Coffee Bean. Like you still have to work with customers, you have to work on a team. If you're a manager, if you've done any kind of inventory or ordering or anything of that nature, put it on your resume because those skills can transfer over into the industry. Like, don't think so much of you having to have direct entertainment experience, but more so being a PA is about talking to diff all different kinds of levels from director down to other PAs, okay? Working on a team, positive attitude, making sure you have attention to detail. Um, sometimes it involves, you know, working in G Suite or MS Suite. Like you can do these in other industries. So don't sell yourself short. And um, I see a lot of questions coming in, like how can I PA with no experience? They don't expect you to have experience. What they do expect you to have is some level of professionalism, knowing how to work on a team, positive attitude, don't discredit your soft skills, okay? So I just want to drive that point home because I think a lot of people think that they have to have this specific experience, okay? Um, a couple more questions. Um, a lot of us are applying to internships and jobs for the summer. From your experience, what do we have to, what do we do after applying for an opportunity? Do we just wait for a response or do we reach out directly to the company? Like, what have you done? I'll say me personally, um, after I didn't hear back for like a week and a half, I definitely sent the second email to follow up. Mm -hmm. If you really want it, it's it's important to um, just stay on. Because sometimes um, they may just be honestly busy or just uh, forgot to get back to you. But um, and I think sometimes from uh, my experience, just bugging people a little bit, they kind of like that. Um, it kind of shows them that okay, uh, like dang, this person's hounding me. They they really want to work. So. Um, yeah, definitely send that second email, third email if you have to, but also know when it's time to just, you know, stop pushing it. <laughs> yeah, the two week rule is very, very real. If they don't get back to you, don't feel bad to email them again. Because for all you know, they might have just forgotten about that first email. And then they're like, oh, they restart again. This actually works out great. Uh, so don't, don't worry about reaching out. Also, don't get discouraged when like the first 10 applications you send out get rejected. I had a counter. Uh, I had sent out 123 applications in like a three month pro in a three month time period. I got eight first round interviews, three second round interviews, and finally one job. 
So it's going to take time. And the good thing is, though, at least in this industry, PAs are needed everywhere all the time. When I told my friends who are in computer science and whatnot that it took 173 applications and I was complaining, they were like, Dude, those are baby numbers. We're at 300, 400. You're lucky. And that's when it hit me like, okay, PAs are needed in this industry. Mm-hmm. So just keep applying. You never know who's going to reach back out to you when they need you. And I, and I love what you said really quick about not taking it personally. If like rejection is a part of the process, it's not as harsh as a word as people make it out to be. Like you're going to get no's. That's inevitable, right? Mm-hmm. That's not any, it's not a jab to you personally that you're not qualified or capable. It's just companies have and, set, and projects have different needs at different times. And maybe they just don't have room in the budget or maybe they just um, they have their caps. Like you just never know what's going on on the other end. So please, the worst thing you can do for yourself and your craft is to take every no personally. And quite frankly, if we're being honest, if you take every no personally, you just won't get very far in this industry that way because rejection is such a huge part of, of this industry. But I'm not saying that to scare you, just saying so you're prepared. Okay. I do want to ask this last question. I know we're 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 at time right now, but I do want to wrap with this last question. Um, what's the future of PA jobs with fewer local scripted TV and film productions? How do you survive the instability of extended periods of time like potential strikes without PA work? I do think that's an important question to ask. Personally, I feel like I've been dealing a lot with that lately. Um, since you, the production company I tend to work with, Contrast Films, has been working internationally right now, filming doc- a documentary um, for HBO. So I haven't really been able to get most of my jobs through them as I used to. So that's why I started looking out for like executive assistant or assistant roles for producers. And I was just, I was lucky and that random call, I just called that random producer ended up being successful. So I would just say, look at other opportunities. You just, maybe not just production assistant opportunities, but executive assistant roles, assistant roles, anything entertainment related, I feel like will help. It's a, it's a step, anything entertainment related. So it doesn't really have to be a PA role. Um, keep an open mind and it'll add to your resume. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I also think if like, you know, if like, you know, PA roles are hard to obtain, like also curate what you want to do. Like for example, DJ wants, the, you know, writer's room, you know, screenwriter, get into a room, figure out how to do that. For me, if I want to do a producer, you know, if PA is, I have to stick with it. But like, I can also be like, okay, let me try and do this different route. Like, find other ways that you can move about the ladder if you know PA work is hard to find. Or, um, yeah, look into executive assistant or other assistant roles. Um, just find a way. There's there's ways where PAs and other roles are needed, especially at the bottom. You're still getting your foot in the door. Being an executive assistant, you're still on the desk of an executive that's an integral part of running a production company. So you're still very much exposed to the business, just in a different way. So I think that was great that Mighty mentioned that. Okay, so I know we could go on and on and on, but it is time and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I just want to thank each and every one of you that attended and stayed on. I hope you found this helpful and resourceful. Um, I thank you to our panelists for taking time out of your day to be here. Thank you to the CSUEA for partnering with us once again. Um, Again, we are Pipelines. Follow us at at Pipelines Pro. It's in the chat. Um, Follow the CSUEA so you can stay attuned to more events like this. And just remember, go out there and get it, okay? Your journey is yours. It belongs to you. It can look however you want it to look. So I hope that you will join us for future events. And just thank you so much and happy Friday. We made it, okay? Thank you and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. 